Hi, I'm the Woodpecker today. <laughs> I finished my fourth axis. I ended my last episode knowing that I can go ahead and that my fourth axis will definitely work. Now I need to finish it. The first thing I do is remove what's left of the tabs. And it's only then that I realize that I've designed the box the wrong way. When the case is touching the X-rail, I'm unable to align the center of the chuck with the center of the router. I have to rotate the box by 90 degrees. But to do so, I need to lift the box. So I cut several pieces of plywood and glue them together. While the glue dries, I can do something else, like a tailstock. For that, I need more plywood. I begin with two layers of 6mm plywood. After sticking them together and marking where I want the bearing, I drill the holes on both of them at the same time. Then I can take care of the rest of the layers. Glue them together and wait for the glue to dry. The next morning, both glue-ups are dry. I make sure I have at least one side straight. With this side straight, I can cut one end and trace where I need to drill the shafts hole. And glue both thin pieces to this. Uh, I can't. The glue makes it too slippery. I decide to nail them in place. And now I'm able to clamp this. While the glue dries, I can take care of the other glue up I did yesterday. I begin by cutting it to the right size. and drill one hole in each corner. Then I can use those holes to mark where I need to drill the mating holes in the case. All that's missing is some pieces of dowel. But I'm not totally done. I still need to add a stop so everything will align with the CNC table. This will go just like this. <laughs> it's easier to understand when it's in place. I'll use just one clam to hold this in place. And now I can measure the exact height that I need to cut the tailstock and cut it. And just like for the main box, I have to add a stop. This way I'll be sure that everything will align. And this is how this will work. Each big hole will receive a bearing. And this brass rod will go inside. And luckily, it's a bit too big. It's perfect. I put that on the lathe and start filing the end. Enough for the bearing to slide in. Add some support and continue filing the rod. <laughs> Perfect. I just need to polish this a bit. The last thing to do is to turn a pointy head. It's pretty easy with carbide tools.
and this is how everything will go together. The rod is stuck inside one bearing. This goes at the front. In the back, I put the second bearing. And finally, to hold the bearing in place, the back. And this is how this will work. Ah, perfect. And exciting at the same time. But since I've changed the way the case goes, I'm going to burn another logo on the front of the case. Then it's time to spray two coats of varnish. When the varnish is dry, I can mark and cut a piece of plexiglass for the back. Put it in place and drill some pilot holes for the screws. And do the final assembly. But to do this, I need to modify the wiring again. I begin by adding a wire inside the Y chain. Later you'll see that <laughs> I did this for nothing. At one end I'll solder this selector. Then I put this in place with this box I've printed. I've even printed a wooden nub. It's a shame that I won't use it at all. But in the Y position the CNC moves as it should. If I switch to the rotation position, I control my new toy. Here's a small taste of it. But I want to test it in the real world. So I chuck a piece of wood. One thing I have to say is that the chuck is a charm. And the first test of my new laser will be this fantastic software I just discovered. In fact, it can convert a X and Y design, like this one, into a rotary carving. And here's my first test. I'm very happy. You can see that the 0 and 360 are in the same place. But my motor is wired in reverse. <laughs> I fixed this right away. And I'm ready for my second test. And to convert a file to a rotary, I just need to enter the diameter of the piece that I want to carve. Uh, I didn't enter the right diameter. And this time around, the lines don't align. I really don't like that. And on top of that, the way I've wired everything, if I choose to control the y-axis, the left stepping motor is quite sturdy. But if I choose to control my fourth axis, the motor has no current and it's less than ideal. That's the reason I'm going to change everything and add a fifth stepper motor driver, just to drive my fourth axis. But to control another axis, I also need to change my control board for an Arduino Mega. And here it is, all hooked up. I only had to switch the wires from my own printed circuit board to this one. I also had to change the firmware to be able to control the fourth axis. And here's a little demonstration of all my axes working. And it's time for another test. Now I won't have to worry about the 0 and 360. It's perfect. But my new controller <laughs> changed the rotation again. Ah, no big deal. And the only thing to change in the firmware is the number of pulses per degree. And this is quite easy to calculate. Those stepping motors have 200 steps per rotation. So if I multiply this by the dividing factor that I've set, I get 6400 steps per rotation. But I also have to multiply this by the gearbox reduction factor. And I end up with 19,200 steps for a full rotation. So if I divide this by 360, I end up with 
53.333 steps per degrees. And this is exactly what I've entered in the firmware. It's right after the X, Y, and Z value. And now that I'm sure that this is working perfectly, it's time for my very first carving. I begin by prepping a piece of cherry. I turn it a little bit rounder and add a small tenon at one end. I need a smaller end because of the chuck. But after that, it's as simple as chucking this into place, moving the end stuck in place, and I'm all set to go. The first thing I'm going to carve is this closed fist that I found on Thingiverse. Yes, I know, it's not very useful. Useful things will be for another time. But this still needs a little bit of work first. In Aspire, I choose the size that I want for the fist and also that I want to carve it in rotation mode. In a perfect world, I would have set the Z zero position in the dead center of the chuck. But since I will change the carving bit along the way, I need to set it to the cylinder surface. Next, it's very simple. I just import the STL file. But the fist is a bit too big. I need to scale it down to the size of the cylinder. Perfect. Uh, but I have another problem. If I leave the central axis here, I'll have a lot of end carving at the end. So I rotate the fist a bit up until the knuckle is close to the top of the carving. And it's perfect. After a little bit of scaling down again, this is ready to be carved. Mm, not really. I'll still have a bit of work to do. First, I change the combine mode to merge. This way, when I'll add the central tab, the fist will say just like this. If I would only want a fist, here I would be done. But I want to add my logo on the back of the end. So I select the fist and the zero plane and group them together. Now I'm ready to put my logo right here. First thing to do is to import it. Okay, it's a big too big and not really where I want it to be. I scale it down and place it where I think it should be. If I look at this in 3D, it's almost what I want. After some fine tuning on the size and the thickness of the logo, I'm ready for the tool paths. I begin with the roughing pass. Frankly, this is quite easy. I choose the tool bit and press calculate. And this is what the CNC will remove. In fact, all of this is already done in my time lapse. For a while, I'm showing the finishing pass. Speaking of finishing pass, it's time to take care of it. But if I were to press calculate right now, I would have serious problems. Yes, the chocolate would hit the exterior wall and the carving will be ruined. <laughs> You'll see. It's what I did and now I have this ugly line on it. So what you need to do is to go back to the drawing tab and add a rectangle around the fist. Then select that the finishing pass uses the selected vector as its boundary and then press calculate. And here's the final result. I just need to save both tool paths and I'm ready to carve this just like what you're seeing right now. And since it's done, I can remove it from the chuck and cut both tabs. It's pretty easy to make the base straight. But for the knuckle, it's a bit more involved, but still not that hard. And here it is, my first carving. And you can clearly see the mistake I made with the finishing pass, just before stopping it. But for my very first carving, I'm pretty happy of the result. Yes, it took several weeks of work in front of the computer to design everything for my fourth axis, but now I can use it every day if I want to. And next time, I'll do something more useful than this, but 
it will only be in another episode of the woodpecker